And here he is, the one, the only... Well, here I am, your happy, smiling quiz master, with a chance for each of our couples to win up to $10,000. And if any of them say the secret word, Mark, you remember this. If they say it, they'll get shot. No, they'll win an extra hundred bucks. <laughs> You've all seen the word, and I hope you'll keep it to yourself. Well, anyway, your happy, smiling quiz master will talk to our first couple. Who is this? You. Me? <laughs> Did I say that? After we hear this word from our sponsor. Oh. To you right now. And her um, partner is a well-known figure from the world of uh, sport, Mr. Perry O'Brien. So, folks, you in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to 21. Say the secret word and divide an extra $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Sylvia St. Clair and Perry O'Brien, eh? Perry, glad to see you. Glad to see you, Groucho. Oh, big bruiser, huh? This is one of the finest jockeys in America. <laughs> Either that or he's one of the best horses. <laughs> now, what are you famous for, uh, Perry? Well, I'm a shot putter, Groucho. Well, I could use a shot now myself. <laughs> Aren't you the world's champion shot putter? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah, we'll put it there. Is there any money in shot putting these days? No, I got you. I'm an amateur. You mean you throw that cannonball around for nothing? For fun? Yes, I'm afraid so. Why don't you go into some sport that pays big money, such as college basketball? <laughs> well, this uh, just happened to be the particular thing that I was interested in, and it, the only advantages in this uh, are travel. Mm -hmm. What sort of work do you do now? Well, Groucho, I'm assistant manager at the Wilshire La Cienega branch of the City National Bank of Beverly Hills. You're a banker? Well, then why are you trying to win the paltry little money we give away? Well, actually, Groucho, under the AAU rules, I couldn't accept the money anyway, so I'm going to contribute it to charity. Oh, you mean you're going to give it to me? Oh, no. <laughs> Well, did you get to travel much? In yes, the I sure thing? did, uh, Groucho. Where'd you go? I had the good fortune to travel in about 55 foreign countries since I started, and such countries as uh, all through Europe and Asia, Africa, South America, and uh, Russia. Now, you hold the world's record for the shot put. How far did you throw it? Well, the first time I set the world's record was in 1956, and I threw 63 feet 2 inches. That's the official world's record. Didn't I read something about a youngster at SC breaking your record? Yes, that's correct, Groucho. Uh, Dallas Long and myself both bettered the recognized world's record, and uh, we both hope to continue on throughout the season to really put that record up there. Well, I hold the uh, unofficial world's record. I do. I got thrown out of an apartment not long ago, 70 feet. <laughs> <laughs> you like that, huh? Yes, I don't understand it with no, you, I, feeling. I didn't understand it either when they threw me out. Huh? <laughs> and you are Sylvia St. Clair? No, huh? no, Gosho, uh, Kidby. Where are you from, Sylvie? Uh, I was born in... Ireland? In Dunkirk, in France. I was born in France. Dunkirk? Eh? Dunkirk, yes. Yeah. Dunkirk. Dunkirk, you have to go like Dunk, this. Dunk. That's where, oh. Huh? <laughs> oh, yes, I see. oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. Dunkirk. Dunkirk. Oh, it's wonderful. Your mustache is even better. Yeah, okay. <laughs> How old are you, uh, Miss St. Clair? You don't mind if I call you Miss St. Clair, huh? Mm, you can call me Sylvie. Sylvie? Oui. Really? Merci pas. Très joli, hein? Merci. How old am I? Yeah. Do I have to say? No, you don't. It's necessary, but if you don't, our audience will assume that you're in the late 60s. <laughs> you have a job, Sylvie? Oui. Gosh. No, I mean you. Do you have a job? Yes, I have a job. I am singing. I'm a singer. You sing? I don't hear you. Well, I have, I have been singing in, uh, in, in San Francisco in a nightclub called the Gay Night. Oh. Are you married? No, girl. Would you like to marry? Yes, I would like to marry. And what kind of a man would you like to marry? <laughs> I would like to marry a man with a sense of humor. A sense of what? <laughs> uh, humor. Humor, yeah. yeah. Humor the merrier, that's what you mean. Yes, oh, yeah. yes, that's right. And what else? What and uh, a, a little money, too. I a mean, a you little cannot... money? Yes, yes. I mean, what do you regard as a little money? Mm, it's not important that he should be very rich, just a little rich. <laughs> In other words, you want a man with a sense of humor who's rich. Well, you what you want is a funny millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
know there's a fellow in New York that runs the Seventh Avenue Delicatessen. I think his name is Max Osner or Osner. Very famous delicatessen. And he said to me once, he says, I was born poor and I'll die poor, but in between I want to be rich. <laughs> That's the way you feel about it. We, I think you're we. No, not, not we, you. <laughs> you just want the necessities taken care of. Well, Luxuries aren't important, is that it? Well, uh, it is the contrary. I think I would like the luxury to take care, to be taken care of, and then the necessities that take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. No, well, that's a very interesting uh, philosophy. <laughs> I can see that you've studied under that famous Hungarian philosopher, Zsa Zsa Gabor. Oh, oh, oh no! <laughs> How about you, big boy? You married? No, I'm not. You don't care if I called you big boy, huh? No. no. Suppose I called you little boy. Would you object to that? Well, I'd check your eyesight. <laughs> <laughs> you like him, huh? Oh, he's so strong. Pick her up, Harry. Show her how powerful you are. Can you pick me up? I'll hold my thumb. <laughs> Oh, la la. Oh, la la. Merci, my girl. I know a little of Spanish, too. <laughs> now, Perry, now that you picked her up, are you interested in matrimony? Well, I just met her, Groucho. I really don't know too much about her. Well, uh... <laughs> Would you like to get married in the near future? Oh, well, yes, I think so. Would 11 o'clock tonight be convenient? <laughs> That's a little short notice. Oh, well, how about marrying Sylvia? She's very attractive, don't you think? Well, I definitely agree with that. She is very attractive. However, I just met her, Groucho. Give us a little time, please. <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, Sylvia's single, attractive, charming. She hasn't got a quarter. What's the matter with marrying her? Nothing, Groucho. Nothing's the matter with marrying her. I just... Uh, well, marry her then, will you? Let's get on to something. <laughs> Charming couple, and if I were you two, I'd get married immediately. <laughs> well, uh, and Harry, you don't have to carry her over the threshold, you know. You can oh, throw yeah. her right in the kitchen and save time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see how you work together as a team. You select a dictionary quiz. I'll give you the words, you give me the meanings. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win a thousand dollars. Ready? What is a Mustang? Right. What is it? It's a wild horse. Well, that's Grouchy. a horse. I thought a Mustang was what I got here. <laughs> you have one right now. What is a sombrero? It's a Mexican hat. Mexican hat, there. That's mm -hmm. right. You, you don't have a hat. Two right. Get the next two right, and you'll have a thousand dollars. Now, what is a knoblock? No, no. What is a? <laughs> <laughs> what is a niblick? It's uh, an implement used in golf, Groucho. It's a golf, a golf stick, yeah. Right. You now have three right, get the next one right, and you'll have your $1,000. All right, what are siblings? S-I-B-L-I-N-G-S. La chante les potentiels. I know Ziblin. <laughs> well, they're children of the same parents. You have one wrong, but don't get the next one wrong. Don't or get discouraged. You'll be out of the game. How does Vedi go? Uh, it's when you have dizzy. Dizzy, and, yes. And, and uh, you, 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 of course. Uh, you know, you, yeah. you get off balance. Oh, yes, yes. You lose, you lose your balance at the bank. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now I have one right again. What is an octogenarian? It is a uh, person past 80 years old. It's an old croaker who is 80 or more. <laughs> you now have two right. What is a regatta? Gathering of yacht, uh, a boat race. Uh, regatta is a gathering of boats uh, boat for boat race. race that's right. enough, yeah. You now have free right. You're almost there. Get this one right, and the thousand is yours. What is a silo? Uh, you know, yeah, me too. Uh, a silo is a uh, a large uh, cylindrical thing for storing grain. That's right. You've got four. So they do. They have one thousand dollars. One thousand dollars. <laughs> Wait till the dog gets a load of that, huh? <laughs> well, you've won a thousand dollars. Now you can keep it a quid, or else you can come back later and try to double your money. You may even get a chance at five or ten thousand. So go over there and sit down and think about it. And thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Vive la France. Merci, Grosso. Au revoir. Thank you, Grosso. Vive la France.
Pancho, uh, you remember last week we ran out of time while you were talking to a couple of uh, charming youngsters. Uh, so Miss LeBon Pram and Charles Jackson Wheeler are back again to take up where you left off, and here they are. Go on in, people. Welcome back, kids. Now we have a different secret word tonight, and if you say it, you get an extra $100. Now, uh, where were we last week? Uh, one of you said you wanted to be a lawyer, and uh, one a doctor. Now, which is which? I want to be the lawyer. You want to be a lawyer, mm -hmm. And Jackson? Uh, I want to be the doctor. You want to be a doctor. Yes, where did you say you went to school? Hoover High School in Glendale. Hoover Heber, is that it? Uh, <laughs> and LaVon, uh, where do you go? Glendale City College. Oh, you don't go to the same high school? No. no. Now, LaVon, you say you'd like to be a lawyer. Uh, what made you pick that profession? Well, I like people, and I like to help them with their problems. Oh, do you think I... lawyers like people? Sure. Well, there's more to being a lawyer than that. Yeah. What makes you think you'd be a successful lawyer? Do you like to chase ambulances? No, but I like to argue with people, especially my mother. Oh. <laughs> what do you argue about with the mater? Just everything. Especially boys. She likes one type of boy and I like another. She likes one kind of boy and you like another? Yes. Well, it's silly for you and your mother to argue about what kind of boys you each like. You go out with the kind you like, and let her go out with the kind she likes. <laughs> That's known as the Missouri Compromise. Do you have any girlfriends, uh, Sala Jackson? Well, in addition to this one. Oh <laughs> well, yeah, but they're not they're not swinging right now. <laughs> you mean eventually they're going to get hung? <laughs> well, what do you do when you go out on a date with one of these swinging jammers? Well, uh, guess you'd say you have a blast. <laughs> a blast? You mean you blow up the school? No, it does. Well, what is a blast? Well, I mean, like you have a swing in time. You hit with it, Daddy. You <laughs> jive, man. It's a whole new world we're moving in. <laughs> does, the blast, does the blast ever turn out to be a fizzle? Well, uh... Be that's honest when, now. That's when you have a chaperone. Chaperone kills everything? Yes, yeah, sir, it sort of bugs you. <laughs> Why should a chaperone bother you? Well... Can't you overpower us? Well, look, I got, I got a little algebraic formula. Uh, now, A equals boy, yeah. B equals girl, and C equals chaperone. Mm. Now, A plus B minus C, well, that man, that's a black. <laughs> well, I don't know much about algebra, but the solution to that problem is very simple. You know. Just blast the chaperone. That's right. <laughs> I want to thank all you teenagers out front. You know. <laughs> now, Jackson, what is your considered uh, mature, experienced uh, opinion of Levon, since you're a man of the world? Well, she looks like she's a swinging chick. <laughs> what do you think of Sally Jackson here? Uh? Well, I think he's a very nice young man. Mm. <laughs> a very nice young man? Yes. You're rather cautious, aren't you? <laughs> Would you like to have a blast or two with Jackson? Well, he's pretty young. <laughs> And you are. Why do you why do you uh, object to him on another count? He's no amateur, you know. He's got several chicks swinging on the string. <laughs> How's that? Pretty good. Yes, sir. How about it, uh, Levon? Well, I'd rather go out with a boy about 23. You want an old man? Right? An older one. Yeah. Jackson, go home. <laughs> <laughs> this is a situation for an older, more sophisticated man. <laughs> Levon, would you settle for just any fellow who's doddering along at 23? Oh, no. It's just a certain type. Uh -huh. In my opinion, there's three types of boys. Mm -hmm. The lover type. That's the blaster? Oh, yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, they know how to handle girls, and they know where to take them, show them a good time. Like what? The Moulin Rouge or Syrup. It costs money, you know. Oh, I know. Well, they have money, too. It's the main object. Yeah. Um, but do you investigate them first to see uh, what their financial situation is? Oh, you can just sort of tell. You can? How? By the way they dress. Uh -huh. You're sort of a snob, aren't you? <laughs> oh, no. I, well, there's two other types, too. Uh -huh. 
The in-between type. They only date maybe two or three times a month. They have no clothes? <laughs> yes, they have clothes. Mm -hmm. Sit home in their pajamas while she, she's out having a blast with the rich one, huh? And what is the third one? And the bashful type. And they only get He dates. doesn't show up at all, huh? <laughs> now, suppose you had your beady eye on a certain fellow, but he isn't interested in you. Then what do you do? How do you get him interested in you? If I was at school, uh -huh. first of all, I'd look up his schedule. Find out what classes he had and when. Well, how do you how do you find this out? Well, they have big um, drawers and things. Well, you just go and look up the schedule. Uh -huh. You find out where his classes are, and then you just happen to be walking down the hall when the <coughs> classes are out. Now, she, how old are you? Eighteen. Eighteen. And you know, men think that they really chase the women. Right? <laughs> Get a load of this campaign. <laughs> This is, this is more subtle than, than Grant at, at Gettysburg, <coughs> or Shiloh, wherever Grant was. I think it's in Grant's tomb. I don't know where he is. Then what do you do now? You've ascertained and you've got all this information. What do you do? Well, you, you hit him over the head with your algebra books? Or? Oh, no, you find him and then you just casually ask something like, are you going to the game Friday night or something? What game? Well, there's always a game. <laughs> Now, Jackson, let's face it, you just don't have enough experience for LeVon. Now, supposing you went out on a date with her, just what could you possibly talk about that would interest her? Well, I could tell her about the time my guy pushed me flat in my face on the top of, on the, top of the Matterhorn. On the so Matterhorn? Much... Now, how high is the Matterhorn? Uh, it's 14,780 feet. And you climbed at the top? Yes, sir. Mm, that's very impressive. Uh, anything else? Well, uh, well, I, a couple of years ago, I lucked out, and with the help of my father, mostly, I, I became an Eagle Scout at uh, 12 years of age. And so uh, everybody began saying that I was the youngest, so, so President Eisenhower asked me to, uh, to Washington, had a little chat with the, the light. He was, he's a real great guy. He's yeah. just great. Did you bring your clubs with you? <laughs> no, sir. Couldn't play golf at the time. <laughs> This is very interesting stuff, a boy of 15 or 14 you were, climbing the Matterhorn? Yes. And being an Eagle Scout. But what have you done that might impress LeVon? Well, uh, well, in Paris I was kissed by the prettiest girl in the Folie Bergere. <laughs> How did that compare with climbing the Matterhorn? Yeah. That's it, Daddy. That was it? Yes, sir. Now, LeVon, this kid may be uh, 15 in years, but he's going like a house of fire. <laughs> And my suggestion is grab him. Just as soon as he collects his week's allowance. <laughs> well, you nice youngsters, and if the world of tomorrow is going to be in your hands, we've got plenty to worry about. <laughs> okay, let's play you bet your wife. Right. After two weeks, and you're finally going to get a chance to win some money, and tonight you selected world geography. George, tell him the rules. Well, you got to... Uh four right in a row when you win a thousand dollars. You get two wrong in a row when you're out of the game. All right, what is the name of the famous Mexican seaport and resort town south of Mexico City? Um, There's only one in all of Mexico. Mm -hmm. uh, Acapulco. Acapulco is right. You now have one right. Now in what country would you find Lake Como? <laughs> <laughs> That's Italy. That's right. What is the largest city in Africa? Cairo. Cairo is right. I thought that was a corn syrup. <laughs> you now have three right, get the next one right, and you'll have your thousand dollars. Now in the... Uh, I'm sure you've heard of Mandalay, but in what country is Mandalay? Burma. You got four in a row right, and you win one thousand dollars. Now, was that a blast? Yeah. <laughs> now you've won $1,000. You can keep it and quit, or else you can come back later and try to double your money. You may even get a chance at five or even 10000 So go over there and sit down and think about it, and no more kissing until you come back, you hear? <laughs> Thank you very much. can try for the big question tonight. So first, let's hear from Sylvie St. Clair and Carrie O'Brien and learn what their decision is. Come in, folks, please. 
Well, you've won $1,000 so far. If you decide to try for the big money and you fail, you wind up with a total of $500. Now, what are you going to do? I think we'll go on, Groucho. Okay. Now, go ahead. Pick the first number for $10,000. What number do you want? Seven, right? Seven is fine. Put it up, George. Now, you pick one for $5,000. Three. Three? Put up three on the other side. If neither number comes up, the question is why two. Is that right? Turn the wheel. Come sir, come sir. Come see, come sir. I mean, this makes kein Unterschied. The orchestra just blew their brains out over there. <laughs> Your numbers were three and seven. It landed on three, so you've got a chance for $5,000. Are you ready? Ready. The 49th state is Alaska. For $5,000, what was the 48th state to be admitted to the Union? Talk it over. <laughs> What is it? Oregon. No, I'm sorry. Tell him. <laughs> I'm sorry you missed it. The Arizona. I'm sorry you missed it. So you wind up with $500. That isn't too bad. Congratulations. Thank you for being And thanks for being on the show. Thank you, Brad. Good luck. Now let's hear what Charles Jackson Wheeler and LaVon Pram have decided. You come in, folks, please. Lavon and uh, Stonewall Jackson, hop out here. See, they're getting old. They don't walk very fast. <laughs> now you won a thousand dollars so far. Would you mind walking up and down for about five minutes? I get so sick of looking at old people. Huh? <laughs> now you won a thousand dollars. If you decide to try for the big money and you fail, you wind up with a total of five hundred. Now what are you going to do? We're gonna go. You gonna go? Yes, sir. You wanna blast too? Yeah. <laughs> now you are going for the big money. Okay, you know you get to pick two numbers. Go ahead and pick the first number for ten thousand dollars. What number? Oh, five. Five. Now put a five up here for ten thousand dollars. Now pick another number for the five thousand dollars. Seven. Seven, five and seven. Now one of you kids turn the wheel. Numbers were five and seven, and it uh, landed on uh, three. So this question is worth uh, $2,000, isn't it? In 1844, Samuel Moore sent his first telegraph message. It was from Washington to Baltimore. For $2,000, what historic words were transmitted in this first telegraph message? Talk it over. What is it? Um, I don't know. Take a stab at it. Wait a minute. It's right on the tip of my tongue. Well, stick your tongue out. Let's see it. <laughs> he said, uh, from the Constitution of the United States or something. Oh, I'm sorry. The time is up. Mm -hmm. What hath God wrought? That's what he said. That's what it says here. I'm sorry you missed it, so you wind up with the $500. That isn't too bad. Congratulations for being with us. You bet your life. And here he is, the one, the only... Well, here I am, your happy, smiling quiz master, with a chance for each of our couples to win up to $10,000. And if any of them say the sacred word, Mark, you remember this. If they say it, they'll get shot. No, they'll win an extra hundred bucks. <laughs> You've all seen the word, and I hope you'll keep it to yourself. Well, anyway, your happy, smiling quiz master will talk to our first couple. Who is this? You. <laughs> Did I say that? After we hear this word from our sponsor. Oh. To you right now. And her um, partner is a well-known figure from the world of uh, sport, Mr. Perry O'Brien. So, folks, you in, please, and meet 
Groucho Marx. Welcome to 21. Say the secret word and divide an extra $100. It's a common way, something you see every day. Sylvia St. Clair and Perry O'Brien, eh? Perry, glad to see you. Glad to see you, Groucho. Oh, big bruiser. Huh? This is one of the finest jockeys in America. <laughs> Either that or he's one of the best horses. <laughs> now, what are you famous for, uh, Perry? Well, I'm a shot putter, Groucho. Well, I could use a shot now myself. <laughs> Aren't you the world's champion shot putter? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. We'll put it there. <laughs> Barry, is there any money in shot putting these days? No, I got you. I'm an amateur. You mean you throw that cannonball around for nothing? For fun? Yes, I'm afraid so. Why don't you go into some sport that pays big money, such as college basketball? <laughs> Well, this uh, just happened to be the particular thing that I was interested in, and it, the only advantages in this uh, are travel. Mm -hmm. What sort of work do you do now? Uh, well, Groucho, I'm assistant manager at the Wilshire La Cienega branch of the City National Bank of Beverly Hills. You're a banker? Well, then why are you trying to win the paltry little money we give away? Well, actually, Groucho, under the AAU rules, I couldn't accept the money anyway, so I'm going to contribute it to charity. Oh, you mean you're going to give it to me? Oh, no. <laughs> well, did you get to travel much? In yes, I sure thing? did, uh, Groucho. Where'd you go? I, I had the good fortune to travel in about 55 foreign countries since I started, and such countries as uh, all through Europe and Asia, Africa, South America, and...